Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, coming up to three o'clock here in the UK on the 25th of May. Uh, the American market has uh, opened up in the green. As you can see, Vance is ahead of the declines. It's given uh, back a little bit. And as you can see, the uh, Dow uh, uh, measurable 10 points above yesterday's close. Uh, so the uh, under uh, short term trend on Victor Vest is up. Underlying trend is up. Uh, but uh, the longest term measure of the trend, the confirmed call, is still down. Uh, the medium term measure of the trend, the DEW, uh, should turn up today if everything stays in the same place. Let's just have a look. Uh, that's the uh, DEW template. If we look at it over the last three months, uh, and I go to the DEW, you can see that it still hasn't printed a signal. Uh, the last time I looked, the DPO was in positive territory, uh, and that's in fact turned back down again with the market. So uh, I'm, I'm a little suspicious of this market. Uh, and uh, the reason for that, uh, I, I spoke about yesterday at the uh, VectorVest Q&A. Uh, let's just have a look at my favorite market, which is the S&P. It was up 12 points a moment ago. Uh, and it's up five now. So if you have a look at the S&P 500 uh, and get rid of the MACD and have a look over the last three months. Uh, uh, this uh, level uh, was attacked on uh, Friday. And as you can see, and yesterday afternoon, uh, well, yesterday I had an order in to short the darn thing below the, that low and took that order out. Uh, today, it broke up very nicely yesterday and there's still a battle going on here. Uh, and uh, as I said yesterday, folks, I believe that the outcome of this battle uh, will define our uh, uh, market for the next week or two. It, it, did, its, it did its best to get up this morning uh, and uh, the American market are lots of, still thinking eights, one over eight. And uh, uh, that means that markets tend to break if they move 12 points or 12 and a half points, if you like, above a major figure. So uh, the major figure here was 4,200 and it just couldn't get above uh, 4,000 uh, and uh, 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 4,212 uh, and uh, was in fact uh, sold off of that level. If we have a look at the intraday action uh, and I get rid of this line so it doesn't get in the way. We have a look at the intraday action. That's the intraday action uh, and as you can see the market opened up it got it was up above that 12 and a half for a second or two and now it's sold off uh, and uh, 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 down below that low was the break of the first five minute range. An awful lot of the algos will be shorting it here. That's just a, a, a bit of noise really compared to the bigger battle uh, that's going on. Uh, if we have a look at the uh, 24 hour market, uh, the reason that I was suspicious of this move up is that this, this is the huge sell off that we had a what, a couple of weeks ago? And then we have a wave up, a wave down, and a wave up. Now, that pattern is a pattern made famous by Garkley. It's a bearish uh, pattern. And uh, I felt Friday, these highs were attacked. And as I say, I had an order in uh, if the market opened below uh, Friday's low to actually short it, took that order out as it broke up. And then I felt that uh, this level would be attacked up here by the shorts at 4,200. And as I speak, uh, that's in fact happening. So uh, the outcome of this battle will define us. And I know many of you feel it's illogical as to uh, why something happening in New York City should f affect the price of shares on the London stock market. Well, it does, I assure you. Uh, and... Uh, I see that the London stock market is flat. Uh, we'll go to that in a second. Uh, but I'd be much, much happier, folks, if we clear uh, above, let's say, 4,220 odd. Uh, that would be really good. And uh, uh, so let's just watch this today. Now, in the US, I've taken uh, uh, two positions. I've taken one in AIG, 
uh, which is up a tacker tick or two. Uh, that's it's beautifully with the trend, and as you can see, it's pulled back into one of my spring patterns. Nothing that new here, uh, and uh, it's uh, going very nicely indeed. Uh, but uh, I only got into it here. Uh, so uh, it, clearly it's going to take a while to get through that high. It was doing much, much better a moment ago, but as the market, as the overall market sold off, it's come off with the overall market. Clearly it's a huge player. So uh, uh, a long, long way uh, from uh, making any decent money in that. Uh, the gold market uh, looking uh, strong today. Uh, and clearly uh, 1900 is the next big, big level for this. Now this market's making us mind up here uh, it is very very overbought both on the uh, daily and the weekly charts uh, but uh, if it breaks much much higher folks it's starting to move into a major trend after this uh, flag pattern is completed the same sort of trend as it broke into here it was overbought here for weeks and uh, in a trending market, uh, it stays overbought uh, for a very long time. So we've got a, a very important level coming up in the gold market. Uh, I think uh, it can easily come back and test, but my word, it's looking very strong this afternoon. I see my Pan-African resources are up a little bit, uh, and I see that uh, Polymetal is holding its head above that 17 pound level, which is great. And my GDX uh, spread position uh, is well into the money. And as we speak, this thing is uh, moving up towards the 1890 level. Uh, so precious 1891 uh, and uh, next level will be 1900. So gold shares should have a really, really good afternoon. I'm talking it up as I speak. Uh, so uh, that's, that's looking fine. The trend's intact and sooner or later, uh, it's going to attract a great deal of buyers up here uh, who could have concluded that th this uh, overbought signal is rubbish and it's just going to actually move into a trend uh, like it did across here. I'm very positive about the gold market. Technically, it looks wonderful. And uh, I've uh, spoken on many occasions about the big prize, which is that weekly uh even monthly uh, cup and handle pattern, uh, which has got a target uh, uh, well up $2,300 or so. Uh, so, but it won't give us that money easily, folks. All right. Uh, if we do look at the UK market, here we are. Everything looking much, much stronger in the UK market. And I'll repeat, if there is a risk, uh, to the uh, UK market that's uh, pulled back in the American market. Uh, don't get stressed about that uh, pullback that I uh, anticipate, uh, probably anticipate in the S&P. It's probably a relatively small uh, two to three hundred point move. Nevertheless, it will cause our market to in fact uh, uh, stall for a day or two or a week or two. Uh, SLP has got a smack this morning. Uh, and uh, if I now go to viewers, SLP uh, got right down to 120. It's rallied a little bit, 123, I think, the last I looked. Uh, and I've had lots and lots of messages about that. Uh, folks, uh, all of the miners have come back this morning. And I think that uh, what we have to do, what I'll have to do, is to protect capital there. Okay, so if you see it coming down uh, and uh, clipping the vector vest stop loss, closing below the vector vest stop loss, then there's a very easy solution. Just hit the button, take your money. Uh, if it's a full signal, it starts back up again, we can buy it again. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, this KNOS, the numbers yesterday were absolutely marvelous, in line with all the vector vest expectations. Uh, but the market obviously believes it's not enough, uh, or it believes that it can't sustain uh, the growth. But uh, it certainly it was off 25 uh, pence yesterday on great numbers. I see it's off a tick or two uh, today. So this needs to be watched. It looks very oversold on the short term, and the numbers were absolutely wonderful. Games Workshop is broken up. Uh, today and uh, Cranswick is a tad above that uh, 
40 pound level. Uh, I bought a few JD Sports this morning. That's all I've done. Uh, and I've added to JD Sports. I like the pattern in JD Sports. And again, I know I'm a bit of a one trick pony uh, but as you can see it's the same damn thing uh, and I like the look of it I think that this can move now uh, do I know what's going to happen next of course I don't but that's a pattern that stood me in very good stead over the years pretty much the same pattern uh, that I bought into uh, in AIG and I've been buying into it for a very long time and folks this is a mirror image of the pattern that I just explained on the uh, S&P 500, four hour chart of the S&P 500. This is a bullish Gartley pattern. And the one I uh, showed a second ago on the SP 500 is a bearish uh, Gartley pattern. I'm going to be speaking about those patterns for the first time in the course that I'm doing for VectorVest called When to Sell. And uh, uh, in that course, I've detailed the Gartley pattern uh, and uh, uh, in, in particular in reference to how to actually place stop losses if you're in fact incorrect and where you place your target if uh, you are uh, if the share obeys obeys the rules uh, so I, I bought into JD Sports I have no idea what it's done but it looks to me as if it wants to move strongly uh, so uh, I repeat folks just watch uh, uh, that SLP position, uh, uh, if the platinum price comes back, if commodities come back, then it'll come back with it. It's had a very good run. Lots of people will be wanting to protect profits uh, from, uh, I'm, I'm into it from 47 pence. Uh, I've added to it along the way uh, and uh, many people will want to lock those in. So uh, just be careful. Don't hesitate uh, to bank that sort of money. If you go back to the front page now, we can see the advances, in fact, uh, uh, come down a little bit in, in relation to the, the to the declines. Uh, but the Dow is still up 39 points, and uh, the S&P has regained that 4,200 level. Uh, so hopeful uh, that this uh, move can keep going. Uh, and certainly, folks, if we break up through this level and we get up to about the 4,220, it means that this pattern is, in fact, hasn't worked. And all of the people who were short here, and I assure you there are lots who were short here, uh, they're going to have to cover their short positions, which would cause this to actually move very strongly indeed. So a huge battle going on at the 4,200 level for command of this market. Uh, which, in my humble opinion, will define uh, our portfolios uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, if this pattern fails, this bearish pattern fails, then we should see an exceptionally uh, strong and high momentum move upwards, which would take the S&P to about 4,000. Well, let's just uh, work out where it would go to. If I pull this back a little bit, the next target uh, would be uh, 4,376 if this breaks. So that would be 176 points on the S&P uh, if this breaks. And I assure you, uh, I will be uh, doing my best to get as many of them as I can. Uh, so I hope I've explained uh, the dynamics of this market. Uh, there's a huge battle here between those people that believe that the stock market's going to hell in a handbasket and those people uh, that are optimistic. Uh, I'm not going to buy into any more positions until I see that battle resolved. Uh, thanks very much as always. Uh, I don't mean to nag. Protect capital at all costs, folks. Uh, so you can always get back in again. I know it upsets the perfectionists out there uh, to have to get out and back in and people whine and moan uh, about uh, commissions. I know, uh, but protecting capital is absolutely everything. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.